In prepping, there's a lot to get done. At times, it can feel a bit overwhelming when you consider all the things that you have yet to get done, the skills to be learned, and all the items to purchase. In fact, it can be stressful, so much so that it can lead to burnout. In this video, I want to discuss five steps I've found to prevent prepper burnout that have enabled me to stay the course. You can show your support by clicking the like button below, subscribing to our channel, visiting our website, or providing feedback in the comments. Enjoy the video. We all get into prepping for different reasons. And if we started prepping out of a fear of a specific event that never happened, it's easy to give up. I've seen events that have come and gone. For example, Y2K, the stock market crash of 07, the blood moon in 2015, that people assume were gonna be the end of the world and yet here we are still today. As a result, I've known people that have gotten prepper burnout and just moved on because the thing they feared the most came and went. This is why I don't prep for anything specific. I realize there's things that are probable to my region like earthquakes, but I personally see prepping more of a lifestyle and a mindset of self-sustainability than trying to get ready for any specific event. In this video, we'll discuss five ways to prevent prepper burnout. Number one, train for a marathon and not a sprint. I tell this to people I'm introducing to prepping all the time. Ease into prepping in a methodical and thought out manner or you'll burn out quickly. When I first got into prepping, I got so overloaded initially with all the gear and supplies I thought I had to have right away. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would have mapped things out at the beginning by focusing on getting enough food and water to survive for three days and work slowly up from there instead of thinking I had to go out and buy a bunch of cool tactical gear with Molly, which really has nothing to do with prepping. Also, don't get focused on specific events you fear may happen. I had this conversation with a friend a while back that was planning for a specific event to occur that never did, and it was a bit disappointing for him. In the weeks leading up to a calendar event he thought was gonna be catastrophic, he began buying lots and lots of dry food and other survival gear he thought he would need to save him and his family. In the end, nothing happened, and it was a bit of a letdown for him. Instead, I focus on looking for ways to be a well-rounded prepper. I've chosen to focus on getting my finances in order, having a savings account in the event my business were to fail, have food, water, medical, and other supplies stored up should there be a catastrophe in my area. I'm in this for the long haul, and so I'm looking at the long game, not rushing myself for some specific event I think will occur and burning myself out in the process. If you're currently getting burnt out with prepping, go back and reevaluate what are your goals for the next month, three months, six months, and move from there. See the big picture and think long term. This leads us to our next point, number two, create realistic goals. When setting goals, make sure they're realistic. And by realistic, I mean things that are actually achievable, not just some grand aspirations that you would like to see happen. For example, instead of saying, hey, I'd like to get into gardening, begin researching it. Find out what's involved, set a budget, and give yourself a timeline and date to set up your garden. One of my big plans for the coming years is to do this exact thing, begin gardening. So what I did is I went on YouTube the other night, I studied videos on growing gardens in suburban areas, and many of the videos all pointed back to a book entitled All New Square Foot Gardening 2 by Mel Bartholomew. So I ordered the book off Amazon and I'm gonna start setting up a garden in the next week or two. While I'm apprehensive about jumping feet first into something that is totally new for me, I realize that even when setting goals, mistakes will be made, but that's okay. We often get paralyzed when trying something new because we're afraid we'll mess up or look stupid. Realize that part of setting these goals is that mistakes will be made, but learn from them. Also, as you make progress, track it. I know for me psychologically whenever I achieve a goal, there's a lot of satisfaction to continue moving forward to the next goal. I get a boost from accomplishing something and I get excited about the next challenge. Number three, helping others and prepping. Another way I found that really helps prevent burnout is to teach others what you know. I've met various preppers in my area and some are just starting out and I'm more than glad to teach them what I've learned. Even the smallest amount of effort that I have spent teaching them has really served as a motivation to help me move forward. I recently attended a prepper meetup in my area and I met a guy that was new to the area. As we chatted, I shared with him some of the ranges in our area where I go shooting. Turns out he had absolutely no firearm experience and at the time I was recently fresh off a three day firearm training trip and so I was able to take him out the next week to the range and I began to teach him what I learned. Within a short period of time, he was handling the firearm safely and proficiently with confidence. Now he's beginning to actively work on his markmanship skills. One of the things that has impressed me about local preppers in my area is that they're very willing and glad to help others learn. And do the same for others that you meet that are new to prepping. And here's a catch, you don't have to know everything in order to teach someone. If you know the basics, then teach that. 
if you're only five months ahead of someone else that is new to prepping, then, then you have five months worth of knowledge and skills to impart to them. Find ways to help others that you have vetted out for prepping, and not only will it help you stay motivated, but you can also build allies in the process. Number four, take time to relax and enjoy life. From time to time, you gotta take a step back and just chill out a little. Constantly being under stress can burn you out in any situation, especially when it comes to prepping and the fear of some imminent threat looming over you. I went through a really hard season with work at the beginning of the year where we were overloaded with projects. As a result, we had four months of non-stop stress. It was during this time that I got severely burnt out and wanted to quit what I was doing altogether. I found that this can happen in really any area of life, especially when it comes to prepping. We can get so focused on obtaining gear and skills, feel overloaded, and end up getting burnt out. Take a step back for a moment and don't forget to enjoy the present life you have. This is a very common complaint I hear in the comments sections of my YouTube channel when someone stumbles across one of my videos and is not a prepper. And they often ask, why are you all so paranoid and so scared? I don't often respond to these criticisms as I don't like getting into debates with people in the comments section, but the reality is that I really do enjoy life quite a lot. I plan on growing old and watching my kids and grandkids grow up as well. To me, this is so important, so much so that I know that being prepared for the unexpected will allow me to protect my life and the lives of my family no matter what gets thrown on our way. Number five, look at prepping as a lifestyle. Prepping is not a destination, but rather a journey. I had the same epiphany years ago with finances when I started reading Dave Ramsey's book, Financial Peace. His book, which I'll provide a link to in the description section below, allowed me to completely rethink finances. For many years, I had no discipline with money and would spend it as soon as I made it. Now I do the exact opposite. When I make it, I save it to invest later. I want to get out of the rat race and I see money as a tool to get me there. How I save and spend money is now a lifestyle. It's a mentality that has freed me up from the shackles of debt. Prepping is the same way for me. While I set realistic goals for skills I'm trying to learn or gear I'm trying to obtain, it's no longer an issue of trying to race to some final destination, but it's a mindset of always being prepared. One of my favorite activities growing up was Boy Scouts, which I think was one of the big reasons I gravitated toward prepping. The scout motto is be prepared. In life, I look at prepping as something I blend into my daily life. It's a way of thinking of being prepared for the probable things I might face. As in point one mentioned earlier, I'm not concerned per se with a specific event, but rather the possible things life could throw at me each day along with the other myriad of possible challenges that I might face one day. I see life not through the lens of paranoia, but rather being prepared. Shifting to this mindset of being prepared along with a strong desire to be self-reliant, prepping is no longer a burden. When I first started getting serious about prepping, I would really get stressed out a lot, and I nearly got burnt out at the beginning. Using these steps above, I've been able to change my view to a long-term journey, which has enabled me to stay the course and prevent getting burnt out. If you have any tips that have helped you, please share them in the comments section below, as feedback from the community has always helped me learn a lot. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, subscribe, or comment. And as always, be safe out there.